Where do these organs go? Where is this vast number of trading items going? People used to go to India, they used to go to Egypt, they used to go to the Philippines. People have written books about this and made a big fuss about this. And they tended to lump all these issues together as part of human exploitation. I don't lump them together. I did not write this book. It is not called malpractice. It is not called prisoners' rights abuse in China. It is called the slaughter because these people, Uyghurs, Falun Gong, Falun Gong pregnant women are not even given any form to sign. There is no consent form to write out as a final act, I want to donate my organs to the state. And they're treated like animals and they're slaughtered like animals. And that is the essence of this book. That is why I consider this a crime against humanity, not a question of prisoners' rights or rights abuse. This is a unique crime. It's one of the bigger crimes we've seen this century, maybe in the last century too. It's an unusual crime. It compares with Unit 731, but it represents a level of medical corruption that we have not seen since the Holocaust. A level of medical experimentation and the willingness to use lives this way. Now we have an ability to turn us into $200,000, $300,000 worth of profit. That's what we're worth. If we were at war, this would be the moment where we bombed the railways. We are not at war, therefore this is the moment where we have to take stock of what we can accept, we as a people can accept doing. What can we be involved with? How culpable can we be? In China, the kidney in the bathtub story is not only real, it is state-sponsored. It is run by the Chinese government. And it does not just use regular prisoners, rapists, murderers, the like. It uses prisoners of conscience. We've reached a state of evidence. Now, having said that, I am standing on the shoulders of giants. Plenty of great researchers who've done great work in this area, and I think we've reached critical mass. If you are going to China right now to get an organ, chances are a perfectly innocent person is dying for you. 65,000 people over uh, eight years, political prisoners, it uses this massive prisoner population, particularly Falun Gong, as a source for organs. This is the only country where this is truly legal. This is it, China. Now this is something we all want to neglect. We all want to turn our, our eyes away. We're, we're not going to stop trading with China. We're not going to, uh, China is going to be a player in the world. How do we square the China we know with what I've just told you? It is like finding out a relative of yours is a child molester. Now you may have known they had some problems before, but now you know they're a child molester. I've given you that knowledge. I don't tell you what to do with that knowledge. Like I don't tell you to do anything in the book. That's not what I'm here to do, is to tell the reader how to think about that. But if we are to live with ourselves, can we continue to have organ tourism to China?